Team Associated are based in the USA, actually California to be precise. The RC10 is most definitely, without a doubt, the most popular car of choice when racing two-wheel drive in the USA. Tracks in the UK differ dramatically from tracks in the USA, so setup is also completely different. In this video, I will explain the setup changes that I've done to adapt the car to the tracks that we run here in the UK. So just a bit of an update then, where have we raced this car? Well, first of all, when it came out of the box, I built it, I did a little build video on it, which you might have seen. If you haven't, go check it out. The first outing from this car was at Slough uh, RC Car Club, which was uh, an amazing track, quite a big track. I ended up, I think, winning the C final with a box stock car. So the next outing for this car was the YouTuber race where we raced Kev Tolbert, Noah from Noah's RCs, we raced RC Kicks at Tom Lee RC. However, this is when I started to think this car is up against Kev, because I know Kev did a lot to his car, and his car was considerably quicker than this. Not in a straight line, but just in the corners. That's when I started to think, I need to do some tweaks here. That was a really good event. I ended up coming third on that event, so I was quite happy with that. The next time I took the car out was the biggest meeting I personally have ever done in my entire life, which was the MKGP, which was, well, it had some real good, amazing races there from all over the world. I raced this car once again, pretty much box stock. And that's when I thought to myself, I really need to do some setup changes with this car because there was cars just coming the inside of me. Again, it was just corner speed. I couldn't get any speed into the corners with this car. Of late, we visited our local club, which is not far from us, uh, called DMS Racing. And that is where I've really had time, well, time on track really, to really put together some changes, some tweaks and bits and pieces to make this car a way better car. So what's the problem with this car? Well, I have to say it is the best car I've ever owned, without question. It is an absolutely amazing piece of kit. However, the main problem for me and others, by all accounts, out of the box, this car understeers. I know that speaking to Kevin Talbot when we raced him, his car was exactly the same. Reason being, Team Associated are an American company. The tyres which they use over there are predominantly the J Concepts type of tyre. We don't use those in, in, in the UK. We tend to use the Schumacher, Cut staggers and cactus rears, the yellow compound, most of the places that we go. I should imagine it will change when you go outside. I've not done any, any outdoor racing, so I can't really comment on that. So, what setup changes have I made? Okay, first of all, nice and easy, what I've done is I have stood the rear shocks up and I've leaned the front shocks straight in forwards, and that's given me straight away. I noticed that the car was ducking into the corners slightly better. So that's number one. Nice and easy fix. Could do it trackside, not a problem. Number two, what have I done? I've added some weight to the front, right down there at the front of the car. I've put, I believe it's a 10 gram weight, okay? That, again, has really helped. Having spoken to other drivers, they have suggested moving everything up to the front, which I've done. And again, as soon as I put it on track, it was a little bit better. Now. Putting weight at the front seems to be, having spoken to people, it seems to be the way to go with these cars. What you can do is get one of these. It's the upgraded bulkhead. This one's 12 grams. I will be fitting that actually before my next race meeting, just to add a little bit more. Another thing I've done to this car is I've changed the rear springs. The car comes with the blues. I have changed them to the yellows, which are slightly more stiffer. So what that tends to do, as you come down the straight, on throttle, want to go into the corner, it tends to not push the car back, therefore the wheels don't lift up, therefore it comes into the corner better. And again, it's working, it's slightly better. Having spoken to other drivers at the track who are doing well, which again, I would suggest doing, you know, finding your local club guru, uh, they have suggested adjusting the rear toe on the car. That's done easily by using these little spacer things that are what they're called anyway you can use these and it, apparently it needs to be at one degree it's set at two degree to the kit specifications so we're going to adjust that i'll get back to you on that one i went on to the cml team associated facebook page and asked a couple of questions on how to make this car 
quicker for UK tracks. And a couple of people got back to me and they, this is quite, this is quite a big one. I don't normally tend to do this, but I thought, you know what, I'm gonna do it if these guys are suggesting to do this. And they suggested drilling out the piston holes so they're slightly bigger. So, I did it. So the front pistons are drilled out to 1.8 mil and I added another hole in there. So there's actually three holes in these pistons now. And the smaller one that was added was 1.1 millimeter. Huge change, right? But I've done it and the car's running better. They suggested also in the rear, and this is, I didn't think this was right, but I did it anyway. Uh, and I drilled those out to two millimeter. You can drill your shock pistons by getting a set of these. Now these are seven pounds on Amazon, right? Now I know that there are certain companies out there buying these and sticking their own logos on and charging you twice as much. So don't fall for that. Get them off Amazon. They are brilliant. They're really well made. They're actually used for PCB like circuit boards and things like that. It's 1.1 millimeter all the way up to two mil. So you shouldn't need any bigger ones than that when you're running these cars or making any changes. When you build the kit in here, you get two little shims. I've also taken the shims out of here, which is giving me a much more aggressive feel to the car, which is actually what I uh, what I was after. So yeah, look out for those. I think the lower you get these, the more aggressive the car becomes. There's a couple of little things that I completely forgotten about. Remember, this is relatively new to me, right? Um, running two wheel drive buggies indoors. I've only done it five, you know, five times to be quite honest, five different, I've been to five locations and done it five times. I was speaking to another club guru at the club and I said to him, listen, the car's a bit slow on the straight. And he said to me, well, have you put any turbo on your ESC? And the answer was no, it was in blinky mode. I thought, oh yeah, I forgot about turbo. All right, yeah. So again, I've added a little bit of turbo on there. So as soon as it comes straight onto that straight, it now picks up and it's got that top speed that I was after. I could have done with that at the MKGP because this car was, was really slow at the MKGP. So there you go. You can have a little mess around with your turbo settings as well if you feel comfortable with it. If you don't, then leave it. Get used to the car, use it in blinky mode, get used to it and then start to notch things up. Uh, as and when you can kind of get around the track without making mistakes. Now, the last thing, how do you get quicker on track? We say it every time we do a video, consistency. You get around the track, you're better off going slower and getting it around and not making any crashes. Now, the problem is the bigger tracks, if you crash on a big track, your marshal is gonna take a long time to get to your car. So yeah, the, the bottom line is, you know, don't crash, but you already know that, right? So, to sum up, out of the box, I found this car to be understeering. That was my main problem. I couldn't get any corner speed. So, to sum up, the things that I've changed in this car are, number one, shock position. Number two, I've changed my rear springs. Number three, I've drilled out the shock pistons. Number four, I've added most of the weight to the front. Number five, I haven't yet, but I will be changing the rear toe to one degree. Also, that I forgot to mention is ride height. I've got the ride height down at 14 millimeter, which is perfect for the track that we're using. Uh, the way to do that is you drop the car, slide your gauge underneath and you check your ride height. So those are the changes that I've made to this car to make it a faster car. And it has most definitely 100% worked for me. Now, use this as a guide if you wish. There are some other videos out there from far better racers than I am. I am merely a club racer, all right? But I wanted to get my car faster and it's done it. So some of those changes you might, um, you might consider doing. What I did wanna do with this video is use it as a little bit of a, a hub for everybody, everybody and anybody who's got one of these cars who have got anything good to say about them that they've done to get the car handling as best as they can. So please, in the comments, if you've got any ideas of how to make these cars quicker, better handling, faster, whatever, put them in the comments below. So people like me and like you who have recently got these cars can just do some tweaks to get them handling how you want. Now, slight disclaimer here, 
in that the changes I've made suit my driving. You may well feel that some of the changes that I've done to my car won't suit your driving, and that's absolutely fine. You can always revert back to it, but when you're drilling piston holes and stuff, obviously you can't go backwards. So you might want to consider doing that if you feel really confident or you've got some money to rebuy your pistons if you cock it up. Anyway, I hope that video was really useful for you. I've really enjoyed running this car. I, uh, it's, it's safe to say I've been completely bitten by the two wheel drive racing scene in the UK. It has been absolutely brilliant. And I will continue to do it and I will make sure that I will blog my journey if you want to see it. So, listen, if you like what you see, like, subscribe. Don't forget to smash the old ding-dong bell and we'll see you again on another video.